So today we're going to go over how to find the x and the y intercepts. It doesn't say find the. Does it say find the y intercepts? Yeah, it does say find the. Oh yeah, it does right there. <laughs> um, it does say to find the x and y intercepts, but the notes are really like how to find the x intercepts because everybody should know how to find y intercepts and they're easy. The x intercepts are the ones that take a little more work. How do you find x or y intercepts? Plug in zero. So you plug in zero for the other variable. So if I want to find the y-intercept, let's find the y-intercept real fast. How do we find the y-intercept? So you do f of 0, 2 <laughs> times 0 minus 3 squared minus 0 and we get 10. So the y-intercept is 0, 10. Now the method for finding the x-intercepts, it depends on um, what form it's in. You can use some of these um, methods for multiple forms, but um, you want to do it the most efficient way possible. Then follow my suggestions. What form is this in? Vertex. This is in vertex form. So when it is in vertex form, solving by the square root method is the most efficient. It takes the least amount of work. So to do the x-intercepts, we're first going to plug in 0 for y. We have 0 equals 2 times x minus 3 squared minus 8. Plug in 0 for y. Then we're going to solve for x. So by square root method, we're going to add the 8 to the other side. And then we're going to divide by 2. And we're basically isolating whatever is squared. And once we have isolated what is squared, how do I get rid of squared? Okay, but if you do a square root, there's something else you got to do. Right, good job. So we're going to do plus or minus on that 4. Um, I'm going to switch sides only because I like the x on this side. You don't really have to. I, that's how I've always done it, so I felt the need to switch sides of the equation. So now we square root both sides and we get x minus 3 is equal to plus minus 2. So we will have two x-intercepts. And then we're going to add the 3 both sides. <coughs> and then the question is, can I actually add 3 plus 2? Is that something I can do? Yes. Okay, then I should do it. Darn it. So we're going to do 3 plus 2. We're also going to do 3 minus 2. We're going to do 3 plus 4 minus 2. We have our two x-intercepts. Um, I'm going to write those as ordered pairs. Remember, ordered pairs have parentheses around them. So we've got our x-intercept and our y-intercept. What is in vertex form? If it's not in vertex form, I would not do this square root method. It's not going to work. It's not in vertex form. So we got other forms. We got other methods. If it is in quadratic form, sometimes you might want to use quadratic formula, and actually always you can use quadratic formula if it's in quadratic form. But sometimes you can do three. What's thirty say? Factoring. Factory. It only the, the factoring only works if it's factorable. This one is not factorable. I chose one that is not factorable, so we can use quadratic formula for sure. But that one would be like factoring it. If it works, that's going to be faster. But if you don't like factoring, do it by quadratic formula every time. It's up to you. <sighs> All right, so quadratic formula. Uh, let's do our y-intercept first. That one's really easy. Y-intercept. Plug in 0 for x. Y-intercept. 
to zero one. X-intercepts, we plug in zero for Y. And we might try to factor that one, but there's no way that one factors, so we're going to use quadratic formula. X equals opposite B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Simplify. 4 plus or minus square root 12 over 2. Does square root 12 work? No, that's why it didn't factor. Because square root 12 isn't, isn't going to come out to be a nice easy answer. But we can simplify it. What's square root 12? 2, two radical 3. And then at this point, can I factor out any numbers and cancel them? So I'm teaching this in Algebra 2 right now, and, and I feel like I say this a lot, but um, you guys, you haven't really reviewed a lot of this about canceling and factoring and canceling, but if I do this, I'm, I'm, I'm sacrificing just to show you what not to do. If I do this, this is wrong. You can't do that, and the money will die. Okay. It is sad. I sacrificed, just to teach you. So what we have to do is we have to factor something out. Like, what number can I factor out of 4 and 2 radical 3? To factor it out, I just didn't do that right. If you can factor it out, meaning unmultiply it, if you can factor it out, then you can cancel that. Not if I just, if I just canceled those twos, I would have had four. Yeah, you, that's, that's, that's factoring. Another way you could look at this is um, you could just take that two and distribute it to both terms in the numerator, you could do 4 over 2 plus or minus 2 radical 3 over 2. And then you could reduce the 4 halves and the 2 halves, and you still get 2 plus or minus radical 3. Okay. So those would be our two x-intercepts. If we're going to write that as an ordered pair, then you would do 2 plus or minus radical 3 comma 0. That's two ordered pairs. You can write them separate if you want to. 2 plus and 2 minus. But you can't. That's fine. You're going to have to graph them. So you're going to need them separate. You're going to have to graph them. We're not only finding nice intercepts today. We're doing the whole thing. But we're starting out with intercepts. Well, that's unfortunately the content. All right, the next one is an example where you might want to use factoring. So y-intercept, quick, y-intercept, plug in 0 for x. And so our y-intercept is 0, negative 56. And then for the x-intercept, we plug in 0 for y. And then I've told you this one will factor. So remember, we factor trying only you're going to do like guess and check factoring. It's going to be both x. we got to multiply together to give us negative 56. So that tells us 1 is positive and 1 is negative. What makes 56? But then adds together to give us negative 1. Positive 7, negative 8. Once you have it factored, then we set each factor equal to zero. So x plus 7 equals zero, and x minus 8 equals zero. And we had a couple examples in um, 
yesterday's assignment or Friday's assignment that you had to do that to end up finding the vertex. works. When you do your assignment, you kind of have to like look at the question and see what form it's set up in. And then if it's in quadratic form, start factoring. If it doesn't factor, then do quadratic formula. Or just go right in and do quadratic formula every time. All right. The other page. Oh, um, there are, yeah, the other page is next, right? Yeah. So the other page is um, the exact same questions we just did. Exact same questions. And now it says identify the vertex, the axis, the symmetry, the x and y intercepts, and graph each function. But we've already done the x and y intercepts, just like you do it in homework. We're just going to add on the rest of it and graph. So these you're not going to graph using a parent function. So you don't have to graph the parent function either. So we're graphing these using finding the vertex, finding the axis symmetry, the x and y intercepts, and connecting all the dots. So what's our vertex for this first one? It was in vertex form. What's our vertex? <laughs> Three negative eight. So I'm gonna plot that. Oh, and then our axis of symmetry is x equals three. <coughs> we found our x-intercepts on the previous example, so I'm just copying those. We already found those. Graph them. Go on the x-axis. And then the y-intercept. We already found that one. Now, what's really special and helpful about parabolas is that they are symmetric. So once you plot that y-intercept, you should be able to find one more ordered pair, one more point, because there is a mirror point to the y-intercept. So you should be able to look and say, well, the y-intercept is three away from the center, so another three away in the other direction, we've got another point. If I needed more points, if I didn't have a five nice points to, to connect, then, then plug some X's in and do like a table if I needed more points. But at this point, we should have enough to connect. Let's see, when would you need more points? Uh, maybe if the X intercepts and the Y intercepts were all the same number. Like if they were all at the same place, you might need some more points to see how wide it is. All right, next one. We need to find the vertex in the AOS. We already have our x and y intercepts, and we need to graph it. So it's in quadratic form. What should I be finding first when it's in quadratic form? The AOS, right. Now, if you already found the x-intercepts, you could use the intercept form information. We're not going to. You could use the intercept form to find the AOS. I'm going to do the formula, the negative V over 2X. Uh, so what do we got? Negative positive 4 over 2 times 1. So X is 2. Did I do that right? Yeah. So there's my AOS. And then how do I find my vertex? Plug it in, so f of 2. Get negative 3, so my vertex is at 2, negative 3. <coughs> we 
We've already found our y-intercept. So one. And remember, after you find your y-intercept, you should use that mirror point to give you an extra point to connect for accuracy. And then the x-intercepts we have. I hear it. I hear it being pulled out. You're going to need to find a decimal approximation. So what's radical 3? What's radical 4? Okay, so what's radical 3? <laughs> Close to 2. It's about 1.7, I think. Is that right? Did anybody type it in? About 1.7. So we're doing 2 plus or minus 1.7. So from the center, you're going in each direction 1.7. We did some practice with that, like in the last chapter when you're doing things like foci. And if you feel like you need more points, then plug in some numbers. One thing I'm not assessing you on currently is if you can plug an equation in the calculator and hit graph and look at a table. That is not what's being assessed here. What's being assessed is if you can find information by hand. So your calculator, you can use it as a tool to kind of check to make sure you're doing things right, but it should not be where you're getting all your information from. All right, and then the last one, we, um, need to find the AOS first because that one is in quadratic form. And I said this on the last one. I'm actually going to do it on this one. Um, if you know your X and Y, inter or I mean your X intercepts, we already know them. Where were they? 8 and negative 7. You can add them together and divide by 2, you can average them to find your AOS. That's one way of finding your AOS. If you've already done the X and Y intercept, or the X intercepts, you can find the middle for your axis of symmetry. So my X intercepts at 8 and negative 7. What's the middle of 8 and negative 7? 8 minus 7 is 1 over 2. Half. Does that make sense graphically? that from negative 7 to positive 8, 1 half is what's right in the middle. So if you find your x-intercepts first, you can use that method to find the AOS. You don't have to. I'm just giving you options, giving you different ways that you could do your homework. And then we need to find our vertex. Regardless of how you found your AOS, you still have to plug in your vertex point, F of half. And when you plug that in, you get negative 56 and a quarter. My y-intercept is at negative 56. What am I going to have to do to graph that? What? I need to change my scale. I can plug in some points if I feel like I need more, but before I even know if I need more, I got to change my scale. I've already plotted these. I'm not changing my x's. I can just change the y's. But you do not tell me off to the side, counting by 10. <laughs> like right on there, like 10, 20, 30. OK, now I know what you're counting by. Don't write it off to the side where I'm not going to see it. Just put it on the graph, what you're counting by. So once you have those, um, once you change your scale, we can find negative 56 and a quarter. And the y-intercepts are really close to that. The y-intercept and the mirror point, I should say. And then if you feel like you need more points to connect, usually five points is good. If you feel like you need more points, then plug in a number. 
plug in one, plug in two, and see what you get. So usually five separate points is good to see the graph. And that's all we're doing today. So in your assignment, it doesn't say the exact directions in the book. So I'm making sure everybody knows today we are doing list, axis of symmetry, vertex, x and y intercepts, and graph. So we're doing that for 13 to 27 odd. Um, I also have some graph paper where I put it on the white paper so you could like do all your work and everything on here and then graph it right next to it. Save you some paper. Oh,